Hello, I've had an enormous amount of people ask me questions about like an emergency, super simple solar setup. I've bought basically every size solar panel that there is, not everyone, but nearly everyone. Also too, I have a couple diagrams below. There's a lot of stuff out there on YouTube and also too on the internet, but they don't make it simple. People want simple. It's like, listen, I don't want to have to read a half a book to set something up. This is connecting two batteries in parallel. And over here, this is a super simple setup. This is illustrating two solar panels, but it could certainly be four. These are two to one Y connectors. They could be three to one. Say, for example, you have three solar panels. They actually make these in cord form. So this is obviously three to one connector, and this is a two to one connector. Also to your charge controller here. And it's really simple. You do or should have, but you don't have to have an inline fuse between your battery and your power inverter. But the setup is this simple. You could almost do it blindfolded. If it seems intimidating, it really is not. Fundamentally, you can get away with two items if you want it for an emergency, your power inverter or your battery. But fundamentally, two components, not counting your cabling. That's either a pair of or more or one large solar panel. When they become ungainly, I'll show you a 320 watt solar panel here in a minute. I recommend uh, easy to move and yet not ungodly gainly to move around a 200 watt rigid solar panels whatever you do don't buy flexible solar panels everybody out there will tell you the same thing they got a lot of issues they're not that reliable they uh, have durability issues uv degradation on and on and on okay one thing everybody kind of does and they should never do because it will burn out your charge controller is that they'll actually hook up the solar panels to the charge controller and they just think well that's just a natural procession of things to set things up but it's not you have all the power from your solar panels from the energy circuit that is light dumping in your charge controller but if you haven't hooked up your battery to your charge controller first then you have all this energy dumping into the charge controller, which every entity out there that makes a charge controller will warn you, will very, very, very quickly destroy it. It'll ruin it. Yeah? Let's take a look at a few things and make things simple. I've got solar panels and inverters and charge controllers in this house out the wazoo. And uh, by the way, I recommend uh, you can get whatever you want. At least get a uh, good... Um, power strip. This is a little ball one that goes from your inverter. Most of these inverters have two power sockets, as you can actually see in here. Um, the important thing is that you can't be using uh, thin cables from uh, your interconnect cables on uh, your battery or from uh, your inverter to the battery. Now the 2000 watt, this is a Renogy 2000 watt power inverter, and those currently are, I think they're on sale currently for uh, 2,000 watt for 260 bucks. It comes with this really nice beefy set of cables. You need beefy cables for battery interconnect cables. That's if you have two or more batteries that you're hooking up in parallel or series. To keep things simple, I'm just gonna be talking about parallel and to keep things simple, I'm gonna be talking about 12 volt. You can actually double the solar panels that you're able to connect to your charge controller um, by having them uh, be 24 volts, but I'm going to keep things simple and people really do want simple. These are the battery interconnect cables. Say you have two or more batteries. Uh, minimum would be these. I think these are zero gauge and then there's these really beefy suckers. These are like 25 bucks a pop, but that's uh, from uh, going from, uh, excuse me, Hooking your batteries in parallel here, you have positive to positive and negative to ne negative, and this uh, battery connection in parallel effectively makes these two or more batteries operate as one. Now, uh, check your uh, charge controller. That actually won't uh, allow a certain limit on amp hours. Like if this was uh, two, uh, 200 each amp hour batteries, which is what this is. This is a lithium iron phosphate, 200 amp hours. I had two of these that I wanted to connect. I'd first connect my uh, interconnect uh, cables here. Now these short little ones, you actually have to put the other battery mirror image right over here, connect positive to positive and negative to negative. So you're actually making these effectively now 12 volt operating as a single battery, 12 volt, but 400 amp hours. So they're operating as one. Your charge controller to your battery, this goes to the positive of battery A and to the negative of battery B, and the same is true for your inverter. 
You know, I actually went out looking on YouTube about this, and there's one really, really dark video that you have to pause because it only shows you for a few seconds. Oddly enough, I don't see anybody actually showing this. And same thing with your inverter to the negative of battery B or battery A, whichever one you designate, and the positive of uh, the other battery. So you're actually drawing off of these two batteries that are operating as one. So obviously you're feeding off of the positive of battery A and the negative of battery B and charging it's the same as true. You're actually charging to the positive lead of battery A and to the negative of battery B. Before you connect the charge controller or the inverters to your true or more batteries, you first need to connect positive to positive, negative to negative. If it's more than two batteries and it's positive to positive, and then if you have three batteries or more, for example, that's the first battery positive and the last battery negative. And you need these beefy interconnect cables. The one thing that you don't need beefy on is from your charge controller to the battery and from the solar panels to the charge controller. Right now I just have these hooked up. These are actually uh, uh, battery jumper cables that you can get at like Lowe's or uh, Home Depot. And you can see a set over here. All I have to do is cut it in two since you have uh, two positive alligator clips and two negative and you just cut the whole cable in half and you have yourself two sets. See how simple this is on the charge controller? This is the uh, 60 uh, amp hour MPPT Renogy charge controller. When you first set this up, this is how difficult it is. Look how difficult. Now, okay, I got a 200 amp hour. Now it's not SLD, which is uh, uh, lead acid i need to change it to lithium there we go the charge controller needs to know what it's charging up different types of battery whether it be lithium um, gel sealed i mean flooded which is lead acid right now of course i have lithium say i had uh, two of these 200 amp hours hooked in parallel it needs to know the capacity right now it thinks it's charging for 200 which is accurate but and go over here and change that, you know, to whatever it is that I need to make it. For example, 400, but right now I just do have 200. Right now, of course, these are my 40-foot Renogy cables that go from your charge controller right here. And they hook the positive and negative of the back of your solar panels right back here. Now, this is a 100 uh, watts uh, solar panel. Do not ever recommend buying these. They're perfectly fine. But the 200s are almost an ideal size. Of course, it depends on the size of your vehicle. What are you going to do? Are you going to put this on the back of your house? Are you going to take this in the back of your truck? Um, if you want to get away with the uh, simple setup, I'll show you the 320s uh, here in a second. Super simple setup would be um, low end, which I just call the inverter and uh, the battery and the charger. And that really is gonna run you about $800 if you choose, for example, a 200 amp hour uh, lithium ion battery. So all you're buying then would be the battery and the power inverter, and you'd need one of these little suckers over here. Now they come in 10 amp. I'm gonna put the links to all this stuff below. Uh, this is a, a 20 amp. Um, they have a 10 amp and 20 amp and a 40 amp. Each one's bigger, and obviously the difference is that they charge the battery a lot faster. Um, all of these um, collapsible solar panels are 50 watt. Now, the 200 I'm about to show you, which is a Renogy, has the same connectors on it, but this one does has uh, no module in here to connect um, like the 200 uh, uh, watt uh, collapsible uh, solar panel below it. These are perfect for portable, but you can't leave these outside. These rigid panels, you can leave them out and... You know, other than the hail destroying them, you can leave them out any sort of freaking weather you want. These are the rigid solar panels. I recommend the 200 watt solar panels. I'm gonna show you a 320 watt, which is the maximum. They do make a 500, they're too flexy, and there's tempered glass on the other side, and man, they're just about sure to arrive broken. They don't pack them that well. Um, you hook these connectors to these, uh, I recommend the 40 foot, they make them in different lengths, but to uh, keep all your stuff indoors and run it outside, I recommend uh, the uh, 40 uh, foot cables on uh, these. On the 200 watt here below, on the little module back here, it's got two USB connectors and one USB-C connector, but they're all the same on these portables, including the 400, and I've got a 400 watt. This one, since it's 200, uh, no, excuse me, this is a 100, hello. 
uh, we have uh, two 50s. So there's a 50 and there's a 50. So you got a total of 100. And they got a little magnetic closure at the top here. Now, this is twice the weight, essentially. And this is uh, 200 watts. By the way, it has little kickstands right here. I'm going to flip it over here. Oh, God. <laughs> twice the weight of that 100. But uh, still, it's an accordion style. Uh, a 50 here, a 50 there, and you can see it actually, there's two more underneath that, so four 50s. The nice thing about these Renogy 200 watt uh, portable solar panels, and this is what I recommend, I think these weigh, how much do these weigh again on the uh, 200 uh, watt? Uh, these weigh 18 pounds. The 400 watt weighs 26 pounds. Um, yep. Here you can see when I plug in here, you have a USB, a USB, and a USB-C connector. So all you need if you just want to hook up, uh, you know, charge your phone, your iPad, is um, open up your solar panel, drop your kickstands, and plug in, uh, plug in uh, your iPhone back here. More wattage you got, less uh, recharge time, of course. Now this is the 60-watt uh, uh, Rover. Uh, currently on this charge controller is $340. I actually recommend and the maximum amount of 12 volt solar you can hook to this is um, 800 watts. So basically eight of these or four um, of the 200 watt solar panels that I recommend. I don't recommend these 100s. They're fine. They're a lot more easily portable. I'm going to show you a kickstand that I invented for all of these rigid solar panels and these stay outside all the time. This is the MPPT charge controller right here. Here you can see I actually cut it. This is a, a power jumper cable. These don't need to be thick. Once again, the only thing you need thick are battery interconnect cables, which is what these are. And I recommend getting the 2000 watt power inverter, which currently is $260 at Renogy. And uh, when you actually have a heavy load drawing off of these, if you had something thin and flimsy. You can't use stuff like this for going from your battery to your inverter. It's going to cause an issue. The load's going to be too much and it's, and it's going to cause a problem. But from your charge controller to your battery for charging, this is perfectly fine. And of course, these are the standard thin uh, cables that go from your solar panels to your charge controller. So you got solar panel and charge controller, charge controller to your battery. Those uh, beefy cables from uh, your inverter to the battery and of course the load right off of there. You can see it's got two regular uh, house sockets right there. I recommend these. Let me get this out of the way. This is the 30 amp and this is $100. It's made really well. The maximum uh, solar input that's allowable on this is uh, 450 watts of solar. Maximum on this one is on the 60 amp hour. Uh, excuse me, the 60 amp, not amp hour, 60 uh, amp uh, Renogy MPPT charge controller is 800 watt solar maximum input. And this is 450 watts maximum solar input. This is the load over here, but you don't need to hook anything to that. You actually have a remote sensor here for putting on uh, your uh, battery for a temperature sensing. You can read all about that, but I'm trying to keep it simple for emergency solar setup. These is, of course, your cables, and even the Renogy cables, Will work fine in the power queen these are you just strip the ends of them there like i have over here you can't see the little ends are stripped you put them in there you lock them down and this of course is uh to your battery once again i recommend these you don't have to use these you can use uh, uh grommets on the end of these but there's not enough power going from your charge controller to your battery unless you have a serious serious large solar setup I mean, serious. The maximum input on this is 800 watts. So you still don't need anything more than these car jumper cables for that. The maximum on this is 450 watts of solar input. So you don't need more than that. I recommend an inline fuse. This is on uh, Power Queen's website. That would uh, place that between uh, the positive on your inverter to your battery. Yeah. Once again, I have the downloadable diagram over there. Um, for a simple solar setup for emergency, $500, I recommend a pair of 200 watt Renogy. Uh, currently that's 500 bucks, actually less than that. One inverter, 2000 watt, I recommend at 250. A $100 charge controller that I recommend the 330 uh, amp uh, MPPT Power Queen charge controller, but I do recommend the Renogy inverter. There's a 2000 watt inverter 
from uh, Power Queen, which is actually really nice and has a couple more features than the Renogy. $100 worth of cables. Your cables, of course, I got listed in the diagram for solar to charge controller or charge controller to uh, your battery. If your battery to your inverter, and once again, if you get the 2000 watt, it comes with its own beefy cables for hooking your charge, I mean, your inverter to your battery. And the total on that for an emergency setup, and that would be one battery, would be $1,500. You wanted to do the low end, which is just inverter, battery, and charger only, that would be roughly $800. Currently, it's $500. No, excuse me. If, yeah, it is basically $500, $475 for two of the 200 watt Renogy, 26 pounds apiece, $630 for a pair of 320 watt Renogy solar panels. Those are huge and ungainly. I'll show you those here in just a second. Those are 40 pounds a piece. Um, for the 200 watt solar folding panel, which I showed you over there, which is four 50 watt panels, that is 18 pounds, but it's very nice. Uh, that's this sucker here. And uh, all you need, if you just wanna hook up your phone and uh, your, uh, your iPad, is to open this sucker up and plug into one of the USB uh, ports or one of the USB-C ports. Let's go take a look at the Oh, here in the here in the hallway and yeah. go ahead and make fun i actually uh, came up with this idea i find it to be perfect uh this is a five dollar piece of wood i got from lowe's i have a uh, screwed in and it comes with the screws on the inverter and the charge controller from Renogy. every piece of wire that i need i attached a, a eight dollar set of wheels to the bottom so the whole thing uh, you can wheel and i, I uh, drilled in a, a handheld a slot here at the top so i have charge controller and inverter and all cables there all i have to do is hook that up to my uh this inverter to my battery and this uh to uh this is a 320 watt Renogy rigid solar panel you can keep these outside 24 7 365 days a year the only thing that's going to wreck it is if someone steals it or if hail hits it It'll last a really long time. You can see here the little invention that I came up with. And I've got these in my cabin. I've been using them for years. It's actually a pull out. And of course I have stops there with industrial rope. It's just hanging there barely. But it's a kickstand, it's a PVC kickstand. You could build these yourself. You see how simple this is. And I can put two of these in the bed of my truck. Although these are large panels, these are 320 watts and the panels are 40 pounds and another like three or four pounds on the PVC, but it all collapses up like that. So you have this brilliant kickstand and you just point it at the sun. Obviously you need to put weights on it because if a strong wind comes along, it's going to blow it over and crash it and ruin it because the face of these rigid solar panels is uh, tempered glass. So that's why I have that crossbar there and there. You hang weights off of there. Actually, I use cinder blocks here at the base of mine at my cabin. They've been that way now for two years. Everything's working great. Yeah, you do have some fuses back here. You want to keep a, a set of replacements of those. This is all sealed, but this pops off. You can blow a fuse on uh, the solar panels. Quite rare. Well, relatively rare. And this is a great idea. $5 piece of wood. It takes you about a half an hour to build this. Yeah, just a piece of wood with two little wheels at the bottom, yeah? So all you need is your solar panel, whatever size. I recommend a pair of 200 uh, watt solar panels. Hook this to your battery. Hook this to your solar panel. And this uh, single unit with all its cabling attached is uh, all you need. Remember, never ever, ever hook up your solar panel to your charge controller without first hooking your charge controller to your battery because otherwise all that power is dumping here and it has nowhere to freaking go and then you will burn out your charge controller and that's not good unless you like wrecking your stuff yeah hope this is informative the links below for the stuff is in the description and a marked link and uh, also to um um yeah the diagrams that i made for you Thanks for watching. If you like this video, any donations are always warmly welcome. Let me know how I could help you. My email is in the link below.